Hi everyone, Ryan here from Fight Game Analysis, and today we are going to be talking about the fight that just wrapped up between David Benavides and David Lemieux. But before we jump into that, if you've been enjoying the content, please go ahead and click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate your support. <laughs> David Benavides, man. He came, he saw, he conquered. <laughs> Dude went out there and did exactly what we thought he was going to do. Looked incredibly dominant from the moment that first bell rang. Finished the fight early. Dude, he's continuing to show us what he's always shown us. And that is that his offense is out there and it is just top of the food chain, world class at 168 pounds. Goes out there and lands a devastating left hook in the first round, finishes up with like a 12 punch combination, gets this close to getting the fight stopped. Shows us a quick left hand and a right, a quick left hook and a right hand in the second round. Hurts Lemieux again, puts him down. Right and then goes out there and shows us another beautiful counter left hook gets the stoppage in the third i mean dude he was doing what he wanted the whole night he was constantly walking forward he was applying the pressure i love he's got this way of throwing these shots I, I love the way he throws his straight little shot he'll do it with the left hand or do it with the right hand but he'll be at a distance that i you know the mule it, it was almost like he didn't expect to get hit tonight and it was just at a timing and a rhythm and a speed and he's just david benavides has such fast hands and he's able to just get this shot out there so quick and he's just able to catch guys off guard and it's the punch that you don't expect that hurts you right it's the one you don't see that does the most damage and Benavides is just constantly able to go out there and it doesn't matter now and what level competition this dude is going against he's continuing to impress and I get it David Lemieux isn't at his prime right now I said it going into this fight and I said it in the analysis video that this is not the David Lemieux that fought Triple G back in the day you know fair enough would Benavides still have gone, you know, gone out there against that version of triple of uh, that version of David Lemieux, the one from like 2015, 2016, that time period when he's been able to go out there and blast him out of there in three rounds and get the stoppage? Maybe. I mean, Benavides is something else, man. He's big, he's long, very strong for the division, incredibly fast hands, punches really well in combination, comes forward like he's the Terminator, won't be denied. You know, look at his defense. Now, here's the thing about that defense. You can say he doesn't use any head movement, and for the most part, he doesn't. Doesn't get underneath any shots. Basically, just goes on, goes with that high guard. Now, what does that do? You know, the negative to that is that he eats all that power, right? Even if you catch it on your forearms, you're catching it on your gloves, it's not the same as getting hit in the chin, no doubt. Not the same as getting hit right in your eye, 100%. I agree. But you're still stopping it. You're stopping all of that force. You're catching all of that shot, right? And just if you're fighting a real punch round after round after round, it wears on you a little bit. It saps you a little bit. It beats up your arms a little bit. It makes you heavy. You're still absorbing some of that power. But the flip side of that is that when you catch that shot, if you're trained well and you know how to catch and counter, it puts you in a beautiful spot to throw your counter shot. And that's what David Benavidez loves to do, right? Loves to catch shots and counter off them. Very fast hands, very accurate puncher. So he puts it together well and it works great for him. But what if you're fighting a guy who can punch like Triple G? What if you're fighting a guy who can punch like Canelo? Do you want to be catching all those left hooks? Every now and then you'd like to be able to back off of him. Every now and then you'd like to be able to get underneath. Doesn't really show that. You know, that's fine. He actually mentioned it in the pre-fight. He's like, guys, look at my defense. They think it's kind of rudimentary. They think it's kind of basic. They think, I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm easy to hit. And then when they get in there and they see something different, and I get it. I understand the subtleties of, of being able to pick shots off with your glove and being on the inside and, and make stuff not quite land and roll the steam off of it. But, you know, it's nice to have a few more wrinkles to your game. And I get it, I'm nitpicking, but I'm just saying. David Lemieux was going out there. He was trying to get after it, man. That's one thing that we can't deny. David Lemieux was going out there tonight. He was trying to get after it. And because of that, he was he was throwing a lot of hard shots, a lot of hard right hands, a lot of hard left hooks. A few of them landed here and there. Like I said, Benavidez caught a lot of them, puts him in a great great position for the counter punch. But will he continue to use that same approach as his game evolves? He's only like 25 years old right now. As you know, in the post fight, he called out everybody. He's like, dude, all them guys, I want them all. Caleb Plant, Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo. He said he's gonna move up. Canelo, Triple G, whoever it is, he's like, I'll fight all of them. I'll fight everybody. David Morrell, Jim Gray mentioned David Morrell's name. All these guys, he said he wants to fight all of them. So as he continues to move up, as he continues to grow, where's his game going to change and evolve? 
that's going to be interesting to see because right now it looks great, right? But we all know that as you continue to fight guys who are a little bit more skilled, they're going to be able to find those nuances and those holes and pick your game apart just a little bit. They're going to be able to make things happen that other guys weren't able to do. So I'm thinking about that a little bit when I look at him defensively. Is he going to is he going to add any wrinkles to that game that's going to help him out against guys who are bigger punchers? I'll tell you what, man, that combination punching, that hand speed, that accuracy, that counter punching, that's going to be trouble for a lot of guys. So I'm really <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next for him, man. What's next for him? You know, I mean, we expected him to look this good in this fight. He was like a a 20 to 1 favor, 25 to 1 favor, depending on where you're looking at these odds. So we expected him to go out there and shine. But now it's all about what's next. Mike Canelo's coming off this loss. What, what what's gonna be is he still gonna is he still gonna do that fight with Triple G? Is he gonna be looking for something else? Where's Benavidez gonna go? What's Caleb Plank got next? Those two are going back and forth on social media a little bit. What's Charlo gonna do after his fight on the 14th next month? Dude, these are all fascinating questions. 160 pounds, 168 pounds is shaping up to uh, have some pretty good fights in store for us in the near future. So tell me what you guys think. Were you as impressed with this performance by Benavides as I was? And what do you think is next for him? Let me know what you guys think.